Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mullen, and in this podcast I'm going to show you how to draw Lewis dot diagrams for covalent compounds. So we're really talking about metals and nonmetals who are getting together to share their electrons. So they're not going to be emptying their orbitals. They're going to try to fill up their valence shells, but because they're not electronegative enough or because they can't find an atom that um, is has a low enough electronegativity, they're going to share what they've got. Um, and so we're going to start by looking, and I'm going to go through some of the uh, the finer details for how we can uh, draw one of these. Um, but I want to kind of start by looking at a couple example problems, and, and I'm going to go through some of these steps. So we're going to start with a compound here, SiH2F2. And what I want you to do is I want you to appreciate that these are going to be metals, uh, metalloids, and nonmetals. And so silicon, hydrogen, and fluorine are the, the atoms we have. And if you have handy uh, electronegativities of the elements table, you'll notice that all of these elements um, are going to have excuse me, fairly high electronegativities, uh, fluorine being very high. Now hydrogen is kind of annoying um, because sometimes it actually acts as a metal. But most often we're going to treat hydrogen like a nonmetal. Um, and so hydrogen is kind of um, you know it's kind of in the middle of being really electronegative and not so much. 2.1 is kind of in the middle. So it can it can actually act as both. But for the most part, we're going to treat it like a nonmetal. So here we have all of these metalloids and nonmetals, and they're getting together. And we're going to make a molecule. So we're going to take all the atoms and they've got a clump of electrons, and we're going to distribute those electrons as we need to. So, uh, the first step is to add up all valence electrons. So we're going to count those highest S and P uh, electrons, and we're going to add them up. Now, if I have a periodic table handy, and you have those old school gro group notations, you're going to notice that um, at the very top, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, um, and you look at those Roman numerals, the Roman numerals are really nice because they can give you kind of a shortcut to uh, figure out how many valence electrons there are. So if I have a periodic table handy um, and you want in really fast in a pinch figure out how many valence electrons they are, just look at the group number. Um, boron has three valence electrons, carbon has four, nitrogen has five, etc. Um, and so if you look at those old group numbers, you can really fast get a count. So we need to count up all the, uh, the outer S and P, highest S and P electrons in each atom. And if there's a charge, uh, we can't just ignore it. We've got to add electrons if there's a negative charge and, and remove electrons if there's a positive charge. Okay, so that's kind of the first step. So we're going to do that for uh, our different atoms. Uh, once we added up our valence electrons, uh, well, let's go ahead and do that first. So silicon uh, is in uh, group four. So has four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. There's two of them, and fluorine has seven. Uh, so as I'm keeping a little track of all my electrons that I have here, um, we're going to add them up. Four plus two times one plus two times seven. When we add up uh, the total number of valence electrons, uh, we're going to have 20. Okay? So we have 20 electrons to work with. Now, that means we have 20 electrons to work with, or uh, that also means that we have um, 10 pairs of electrons, okay, or 10 pairs. You know, you can really think of it any way that you want. But that's, that's how many electrons we have to, to work with. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, draw a, a, we're going to pick a central atom. And this is going to be the atom in the center, and we're going to arrange everything around this one. It's usually going to be an atom with the lowest subscript, or if it's a tie for the lowest subscript, it's usually going to be the one with the lowest electronegativity. Sometimes you may actually have two central atoms, um, but for for these right here, we're going to pick uh, we're going to pick a central atom. So this one is only uh, is only listed once: carbon and nitrogen. Okay, those are going to be our central atoms. So we're going to arrange everything around there. So I'm going to go ahead and get kind of get started with this. Um, and we'll look at all three of these examples. Carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen has six. And I have three of them. So that's a total of, uh, we're just counting up 24 electrons, or 12 pairs of electrons. 
And I'm just I'm just writing that in there so that I can have an idea of how many electrons I have to work with in my molecule. Um, nitrogen has five, hydrogen is four. So five plus my four is my nine electrons. Um, but for these two, now I'm going to look at the charge and I'm going to go back and fix those. So um, 24 electrons, my charge is, go ahead and erase that there, um, because that's going to be my 22 electrons, and then I have to add the two extra, okay? 22 electrons plus 2 equals 24. And then when I get to my um, 24 electrons or, or 12 pairs, and then when I get to nitrogen, uh, this NH4 positive 1, uh, I'm going to count up as well. I have 9 electrons, and then I'm going to add, um, I'm going to actually subtract 1 because I have a positive charge. So I have to remove an electron to give me 8 electrons or uh, four pairs of electrons. I can think of it that way. So now that I have how many electrons I'm working with, the next step is to pick our central atom. So I'm going to draw a little SI and a carbon and a nitrogen in the center. And it doesn't really matter how you arrange these. Uh, you just need to arrange them around. So I'm going to go ahead and arrange these around my central atom. Okay, you're going to do the same thing with carbon. And I'll do him a little bit over here. Okay, oxygen. And then we have nitrogen. We have four nitrogens. Or excuse me, four hydrogens. All right. So once we've drawn, uh, we've drawn these so far. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to arrange all of our atoms around the central atom is the step that we just did. So we picked a central atom, then we arrange all of our peripheral atoms around the central atom, and I'll just use the uh, abbreviation PA for peripheral atoms. The next step is to hook up all the atoms together and sub subtract two electrons per line from your total. So these uh, atoms in my molecule are bonded together. So I've actually already done that. What I did was I arranged just to kind of recap, I arranged my other atoms around my central, and I connected them with a dash, which represents a bond between those two atoms. And for every uh, one bond, okay, each each um, each little line is going to account for two electrons. Okay, so each bond equals two electrons that are being shared. So, once I've connected, I'm going to go ahead and now look at each bond that was equal to two electrons, and I'm going to subtract them from my total. Okay, so uh, silicon, we started out with 20 electrons, and then we just connected one, two, three, four bonds, which is going to subtract from my total eight electrons. So I have now 12 electrons left to work with. Um, that are still part of this molecule. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing for uh, all these other ones. Um, as just as we're going through these different examples, so we had 24 electrons for my uh, molecule here, and we're going to subtract the 2, 4, uh, 6 electrons to give us 18 still. And then we're going to do the same thing with our ammonium. Uh, we had 5, 8 total electrons. Uh, minus two, four, six, eight, and that's going to actually take us right to. We don't have any left. Okay, so that was the next step. Um, once I've hooked up all the atoms and subtract from the total, uh, now we have a certain number of electrons. We're going to fill all peripheral atoms' valent spots. Okay, so when I look at my peripheral atoms, we're going to start with those guys. We're going to make them happy first before we get to our central atom. So I'm going to go to all the peripheral atoms and make sure that they have um, what's called an octet. Most nonmetals want eight electrons in the valence shell to be stable. Um, some atoms, like uh, hydrogen, only need two. Uh, it's called the duet rule because hydrogen only uh, needs two electrons to fill its first energy level. So I'm going to look at all my outside guys and see if they have uh, an octet, if they have their outer shell full. And I have 12 electrons to work with. So hydrogen 
it only needs two electrons to have a full shell. And because it's sh uh, sharing some with silicon, both hydrogens are all set. Fluorine, on the other hand, um, it wants a total of eight electrons. And you can think of in, in this little bond, that there are two little electrons kind of hanging out in there. So both of these fluorines right now have uh, two electrons. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, because I have 12 electrons left, I'm going to draw two, four, six electrons that I'm going to give this fluorine to now uh, give him eight. And I'm going to do the same thing as other fluorine. I have another six electrons left. Um, two, four, six. So what I've just done is I've just burned through my last 12 electrons. I don't have any left. And I have made both my peripheral, all my peripheral atoms happy. They have full octets or duets in hydrogen's case. Um, and they're good. So, and I'm out of electrons, so that my molecule doesn't have any more electrons to add on here. I, I can't add any more. Um, so once I've filled my peripheral atom's valence spots, we're going to check the central atom to make sure that he uh, has an octet, or if, if, it's, um, if it's hydrogen, you can't even have hydrogen in the center. Okay, so we're just going to make sure that my central guy is happy. So silicon, I look around, and he has two, four, six, eight in his outer shell, uh, which means that he has a full octet, and he is happy. So this is going to be the Lewis dot diagram for SiH2F2. Done. Okay. Um, silicon has eight. Yes. So we're going to go to this one here. Carbon. Uh, I have 18 electrons left, so first I'm going to make my outer guys happy. Um, there's 6, so we're going to subtract um, 6 from there. And then we're going to I still have um, another 12 electrons left, so I'm going to go ahead and use up all 18 electrons, or all 9 pairs, to make each one of these oxygen um, have an octet. Because they're my peripheral atoms, uh, oxygen wants two more electrons to have a full shell, and there we go. I actually just burned through 18. I'm out of electrons now, and so I look at all my peripheral atoms, and they are all good. They're happy. They have eight. Now I can look at my central guy. Check the central atom, two, four, six. Nope, carbon needs two more. So if my central atom still needs more, this is a good clue for uh, the fact that we are going to need multiple uh, multiple bonds. And so we're going to be looking around and one of these oxygens is going to have to um, give up his electrons and share them twice, share an extra pair. So I can actually look around and I'm trying to pick which one of these oxygens is, is it going to share with. And because each one of these oxygens has the same exact electronegativity, um, they're all are going to be equal, likely candidates to share those two electrons. So I'm just going to show you an example. If these two electrons go to share, to give carbon another uh, pair, what that's going to show is that that carbon is going to form a double bond with that oxygen. And that pair is going to be going into the double bond. So there's only going to be two what's called lone pairs. Okay, two lone pairs that are up there uh, attached to the other oxygen. And then my lower two oxygens uh, are going to each have six. Now, what's interesting here is, first off, I'm going to go ahead and draw. This is my final Lewis dot diagram because carbon has now two, four, six, eight because there's four bonds. So that's a total of eight electrons. And one of those oxygens was forced to share one of its pairs so that carbon could have an octet. Um, and so carbon still needed electrons, and there weren't any left, so it had to share. Um, if you run into extra dots, everyone's happy, and you have extra dots the, at the end, usually you're going to put them onto the central atom if you have extra. Okay, so um, something that's interesting about this, this um, carbon-oxygen is... This is something called resonance. Um, and resonance occurs when there's more than one way to draw um, a Lewis dot diagram that is, that is equally as probable. So what I mean by that is, in this example of sharing this, uh, 
these electrons with this top oxygen actually could have it could have just as likely shared an electron with this oxygen, or it could have shared an electron with this oxygen. So which one is it? Um, and the answer is is actually a combination of the three. Um, there would be about one like 1.3 bonds in between each one of these, and that that pair of electrons would actually end up being shared equally between all of these oxygens. But the way that we show this on paper, a resonance structure, is we have to draw the other possibilities for what this Lewis dot diagram would look like uh, in the other cases. So I would actually draw the other uh, possibilities for what if carbon double bonded with those other oxygens. And so we can show this. And the reason why I'm drawing brackets around here is because if it has a uh, charge, I need to put a bracket around it. And so I'm going to put my little charge around my, uh, my Lewis dot diagram. And I'm going to show the last possibility here. Um, and that was a double bond with this oxygen down here. So this is called a resonance structure when you have more than one possible Lewis dot diagram um, that's, that's equally as likely you know, how does carbon know which oxygen to choose from if they're all equally as likely, or in this case, equally as unlikely to want to share their electrons? So this is called a resonance structure, where you have multiple Lewis dot diagrams possible. All right, so um, the last thing we need to do is look at uh, NH4. And when I look at the peripheral atoms, they all are happy. I look at the central atom, 2, 4, 6, 8. I was out of electrons. So this is done. Don't forget, because this one has a charge, I'm going to throw a bracket around it and put plus one on there, and now it is done. So uh, this is, has been a, a quick uh, demonstration for how to draw Lewis dot diagrams, and if you have extra dots left over, put them on the central atom. If you need, um, if you need more bonds for the central atom, you're going to have to reach around to other atoms to try to figure out uh, and, and double bond with them, so move those electrons into a bond with them. Uh, the last little bit here I want to go over is um, exceptions to the octet rule. Uh, sometimes um, you'll you'll be seeing boron and beryllium um, are exceptions to the octet rule. Boron is willing to only have six electrons in its valence energy level. So if I look at boron on my little table of electron negativities, um, it's it's kind of on the right in the middle. So the thing about boron is it's it's electronegative uh, enough to to bond and share uh, its three valence electrons, but it's not really electronegative enough to need a full eight. It actually will will be okay with only having six. Um, and so boron is one of those. Beryllium will actually sometimes because its electronegativity is 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 high enough, it will it will covalently bond uh, even though it's a metal. And when it covalently bonds with someone like hydrogen. Uh, it's okay with having only um, four electrons. Okay, so you you could see something like this, and boron could bond with Cl and be okay with not having eight. Okay, so these guys will break the octet rule: um, boron and beryllium, and then. Um, halogens will not double bond and the reason why halogens will not double bond is simply they're so electronegative and they like electrons so much that they're they're unwilling to to share more than one uh, one of their electron pairs in almost all circumstances so do, don't ever um, pick from a halogen and expect the halogen to do a double bond because that will not happen all right this has been a podcast going over how to draw Lewis dot diagrams and I hope that this was helpful